Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the button object in Game Launcher Creator V2. So, the first thing that we do is I'm just going to open up a new project here. I'm just going to call it uh, Sword Test 2. Put in an author name. I'm just going to create a new project from scratch. So, what's the first thing that I need to do? I'm just going to pop in a background image. In fact, no, let's keep it as Y. Let's drop it in from the library. There we go. So we should have an image around here I can use. There's plenty of images available in the library for you to use. Let's just go with the space one that I'll do for now. I'm just going to resize that so it's the size of our launcher window. All right, so I'm going to lock that down. What I can do is uh, insert a button object. So the button object here, this is the template button that's inserted. So um, the way you modify this is you can move it around in the launcher um, and you can resize it, you can reposition it, do whatever you want. If you want to resize it back to the original, you just right click on it, object and resize to original. So if we right click on it and go to properties, you get all the properties for that button. So in here you can define the X and Y coordinate if you want to be precise where you need it to be. You can define the width and the height and you can also define what layer it's on as well. So there's five layers in total and this is so that you can have objects that appear in front of or behind other objects on the launcher interface. So button images, um, as you can see here, we can import our own um, and then we have a series of button actions down here what uh, tells um, the game launcher what to do when the user clicks on that particular button. So you can either do it this way and click on each one of these to import your own buttons or you can go to the library and get a button that's already made for you. So for example we could grab a launch button here if you hover over it in the preview window you get to see what it looks like with the hover animation. Um, so we can choose any one of these so let's choose launch that'll do so I can insert that and you can see it brings it straight into the launcher so I'm going to delete this one because this is the only one we're going to focus on all right so this is a button object so properties uh, and as you can see we get up the uh, properties for uh, this button. So execute game or app is pretty straightforward. If your launcher is going to be in the same directory as your game, then you would just call the executable. So it might be game.exe or gamemp.exe or whatever your executable is called. You also have an extra parameter here where you can uh, close the launcher when this button has been clicked. If you leave that unchecked, then the launcher will stay running in the background. Go to a web page, uh, pretty self-explanatory. The action parameters here will, would be to go to a web page. So if I put in gamelauncherCreator.com there, then when the user clicks on this button, it will take them to this website. Um, end launcher means that uh, it will exit the launcher when the user has clicked on the button. Uh, and check for updates enables the user to check for updates and it will use the built-in update system which is built into Game Launcher Creator here. So you can enable your users to check what version they have installed, what version is available, and if there's a higher version available, they can download the update and the install it to the computer as well. You also have a couple of additional flags for this built-in update system here, so auto update and uh, force update. So auto update will automatically check for an update at the start of the launcher, and a force update will force the user to download will force the launcher to download the latest update and install it so it always ensures that your user has the latest version installed before they play the game uh, but enough on the on the built-in updater because there's another video coming up uh, on that so in the pro version of um, game launcher creator we have some additional um, options here for buttons so you can go to page for example if um, in a pro version you can have unlimited pages so you can segment your game launchers so if you have more than one page you can simply select which page to go to when the user clicks on that button so you can have them navigate around the game launcher <coughs> uh, minimize launcher will enable you to minimize the game launcher to the taskbar if you have the system tray icon um, active then it will minimize to the system tray icon um, 
instead of the taskbar which is pretty cool because it gives your launcher a little home in the system tray to live in so they can just minimize the launcher out of the way now this is the one i want to concentrate on right now is retrieve from registry this is the most powerful function of the button object and this is available in the pro version so basically it enables you to detect if the user has a particular game installed so it can be any game or application and it could be your game or application so what you would do is when you develop your uh, initial install for your game um, you would get your installer to write out to the registry uh, whereabouts the user installed it to this way you can now use the launcher to check whereabouts they installed it on their computer and you can also get it to check that the files are still there um, so I'm just going to quickly open up reg, uh, the registry editor so just do reg edit and I'm just going to use Grand Theft Auto 5 as an example here. So you can see I've got Grand Theft Auto 5 here installed at, uh, on my G drive under games Grand Theft Auto 5. Uh, so you can see that this is the key uh, for uh, obtaining this string here. So if you've never dealt with the registry before, it's fairly simple. Uh, you have a bunch of keys here. Um, if it, usually when you install an, uh, an application or a game to your PC, it will... Um, create some registry entries just to show where it's installed to um, it's usually used for the uninstaller but you can use this to your advantage to detect whereabouts uh, the user has this installed on the computer so if I double click that and then grab that folder name and then just paste it into here we can open it up and see that I do indeed have Grand Theft Auto 5 installed uh, at this location uh, we have a series of executables here, GTA 5, GTA 5 Launcher, Play GTA 5. So back to Game Launcher Creator, we can simply just get the registry root key. So this is the registry root, root key, it's the H key here. Um, so what you would do is copy that over to Game Launcher Creator, paste it in. The current key is everything that follows the H key. So you could copy that, paste that in. And that's the current key um, and then the registry string is the install folder so we can simply just copy that string name and paste that into there and then additional file name is the actual file name what we're going to launch so we'll probably launch gta5 launcher.exe so what you would do is i'll just do that again is pop that into there so let me just show you that again. So it's install folder. It's key local machine. So don't forget that I'm using GTA 5 here as an example. Oh, that goes in the root key. Everything after the H key is the current key. So it's software, WoW 64, 32 node, Rockstar Games, got fifth or five. Now, we've looked at this install folder here. Now, if this was your installation, you would have um, a following or a, a backslash at the end, so a, a leading trail. So, but you know that that doesn't have one in. So when we go back to here, we must ensure that we put a backslash before that, because what's going to what's going to happen is Game Launcher Creator is going to retrieve the install folder, which is there, and then append the additional file name on at the end. So if you have that missing backslash there it's uh, it's going to cause problems and it's not going to run uh, we have some additional switches um, at the end here so we can disable button if the entry isn't found so on the user's computer if this executable is not found at this location then we can disable the button so the user won't, it won't be able to run it because obviously it's not installed on the computer well it's certainly not installed on the computer at that location and then we can also have this additional uh, flag here which is wait for end so basically the launcher runtime will pause until the game or application has finished and then it will continue running uh, and we also have a command line feature here as well uh, that you can use this will enable you to send any command line switches uh, or options to the executable so you can see how easy that was uh, to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that, and build it, and I'm just going to run it just to show you exactly how it works. The build process is really fast inside Game Launcher Creator. It doesn't take long at all to build your launcher. And then when it's finished, it'll pop up with your launcher executable and the data folder that goes with it. And there we go.
So I'm just going to minimise that. I'm just going to close that, minimise that, minimise that. Let's go back to here. So we're just going to run our launcher now. <coughs> and when I click on launch, you can see it's going to launch the executable which we told it to launch and it's basically got the install path from the registry which is great because now you can use this for DRM um, you can use it for DLC add-ons um, you can use it to launch other games that may be installed on the user's computer um, so not just um, not just a game or application that resides inside uh, the same directory as the launcher uh, but that pretty much covers the button object inside game launcher creator v2